Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerhold, Managing Editor of the Register, and my guest today is city activist and co-owner of the Energy Efficient House on 3rd Street, Mark Norman, here to talk about summer jobs, the city, and whatever else Mark wants to talk about. Uh, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors. Someone to call when you need help. Someone to call when you need help. 419-624. That was Mark. 624-1856. Uh, Between the Lines is also brought to you by Lorain County Community College in Elyria. Multiple degree programs, both associate degrees and bachelor degree programs at Lorain County Community College. Uh, also want to mention that uh, Frank LaRose, uh, State <coughs> Senator Frank LaRose, will be our guest on Wednesday at 5.15 p.m. Uh, Senator LaRose is a candidate for Secretary of State next year, and he's in town to talk to the Erie County Republican women, and he's going to stop by the register to talk about why he's a candidate for the Secretary of State's office. Also on Wednesday, we're going to be live with Between the Lines on the road at the River Road McDonald's in Sandusky with Paul Siegfried, the owner-operator of McDonald's, talking about summer jobs uh, and, you know, the opportunities that are available in his company uh, for young people to get a summer job right there on River Road. It's a brand new McDonald's, so we're looking forward to uh, visiting and talking with Mr. Siegfried. Also this week... We have uh, the Nehemiah Center is here to talk about a fundraiser that happens in July, I believe. It's called Ki Keep Kids Cool, and it's a um, fundraiser to install an air conditioning in the gym at Campbell School, so we'll learn all about that. We had Easter Seals on earlier today. You can watch this, that program and all of our Between the Lines programs at SanduskyRegister.com slash BTL. As long as we code it properly, and I got to make sure I do that, and we do that. Uh, with that, I think that's everything. Grant Raymond is here with us today, producing this edition of Between the Lines. You want to say hello, Grant? Hello. Grant is a shadow from Sandusky St. Mary's, a Port Clinton resident, and he will be a University of Cincinnati freshman in the fall, studying electronic media. So he he's getting some good experience right here at the Sandusky Register. Aaron McLaughlin's also with us. Aaron, you want to say hello? Hello. Aaron, <laughs> did I touch every detail of every upcoming thing? Yes. Yeah. Very good. All right. With that, I want to introduce Mark Norman, city activist, friend, uh, co-owner of the house on Third Street. What are we talking about today? Uh, the principal talk, uh, I want to talk about jobs, but uh, it's in context of where the city uh, is a mm -hmm. sort of the state of the city from from my viewpoint. Okay, and you you certainly have been active in city affairs for quite some time, as long as I remember. So that goes back ten years, eleven years. So, what do you think about the city of Sandusky? What's happening? Um, I'm I'm really impressed. Um, I I think there's issues that still need to be addressed, but this the city is uh, working aggressively to uh, on, on so many things and. Uh, we're seeing home sales up. We're seeing code enforcement, so I think we can do some more there. Um, you know, uh, companies are moving uh, downtown. Uh, the Hogafels are are buying and renovating buildings. We've got Cook Sport building, Sport uh, Force is uh, uh, just an overwhelming success. If you've driven by uh, down Cleveland Road, you see even cars parking along the road, and now they're shuttling them in from uh, Sawmill uh, Creek. Um, so. You know, the, the state of the city is, is, is good, it's exciting. Um, so it's a time to stop, to take a minute to think about where we're going and why. And the, uh, uh, I think Eric Whoopser and Matt Laskow and the uh, Angie Bind and the planning department, the commissioners, you know, they're all building this economic engine. But what is it for? Where, where does it take us? Well, it's taking, I know where he's going. He's, uh, it, it's, it's taking us to a future to where we have quality of life, we have good paying jobs, and um, you know, that's an exciting mission. And, and it's lots of reasons why, why people should, uh, with their code enforcement and all the issues they say when the city asks for your help, that's why they're doing it. 
we have a somewhere we're going. We need your help to attract those new businesses, those new residents, and uh, create that quality of life. But there, there's a missing component at this point, and I see that as this future is about our, our kids that are here now. And we need to include them as in part of the process, let them know that they are a priority, and um, start to give them that message. And the way we can do that is to start to give them that first job that uh, uh, so many of us older people had and it was so important in our development. What was your first job? <clears throat> Well, actually, my I jumped the gun on you. What was your first job? My first job? Uh, my dad was a uh, uh, concrete and asphalt uh, contractor, so I worked for him. Uh, but he got out of the uh, business uh, in my teens, and um, I worked for our next-door neighbor as a, uh, as a painter. And um, it was, uh, you know, it was an, an opportunity to start working with people that you don't know, new ideas, new thoughts, new ways of doing things. And, um, you know, so it was a learning experience. But I also know that, uh, you know, I knew that I, I couldn't keep up with them in detail. Um, but they mentored me. You know, they were patient with me. And they kidded around with me. So it was a positive experience. And um, so... So did that impact you throughout your work career? Yeah, I think once you get that first job, it, it, it builds your confidence that, you know, you have something to, to offer and you get the feedback. And I think it's just an important experience that you can contribute. And um, so I, th I think that with a lot of young people, especially when we haven't been able to have uh, jobs for young kids around here, you know, they may not lack, they may lack the confidence to know. To go apply. To go, to go apply. And um, so we need to help them get, get over those fears and, and get to that first job. And that's why I, I've asked in the editorial you graciously ran yesterday. Yesterday, uh, Mark, and you can find it online <coughs> today, Mark's editorial letter, letter to the editor, uh, mm -hmm. asking people to give kids a first job, no matter what it might be. And it can be a company, but it also can be an aunt, an uncle, or a grandparent, a neighbor. Uh, you know, if you, if you know someone and... Uh, um, and you're in a position to do it, hire them, even if it's a couple hours a week, to uh, help you around the house and maybe help, help you with your yard and, uh, you know, and work with them and help mentor them and be part of the process, part, be part of helping us and these young people get to the future that we all uh, be patient. have been long awaiting. And, you know, it's, uh, um, everybody's always talked about Sandusky's potential. Now we're we're, we're seeing it. We're in it, and we just don't know how far it will go. Right. But it's come a long way. That was a lot, Mark. Yeah. You talked about a lot there. Um, <laughs> but so first on the city, I agree with you. And I'm, I'm you know, you are, you are, to hear you say the city's on the right track, you're, um, what, do you, what do you call, a taskmaster. Uh, you know, more so than I am. I think I've been... I've been um, impressed and, and pleased as a resident of Sandusky and as the editor of this newspaper. But you've pointed out repeatedly different things that you wanted to see more work done. And so those things are better in your mind. Code enforcement, as you said, could be better, but you're acknowledging code enforcement is up. Well, and, and I'm, I'm still working with the city on the issues that I think need to be addressed in the neighborhoods. And that's been primarily my focus is the neighborhood, the idea that if we want to attract people back to the city and people who can bring income back to the city, um, then we need to make sure their investment uh, is secure, that, uh, that when they invest in a property, the properties around them will be maintained right. and uh, they, can tr they have trust in the city uh, and its ability to... Uh, maintain standards. I think one thing you said there was, uh, you know, the code enforcement is not personal. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a standard that city officials and residents want homeowners and property owners to achieve. Now, is every property in pristine uh, shape or has every property been repaired? No. But if the city comes to you and asks you to, to repair your home or move your uh, car off the tree lawn, it's not personal. It's, it's just a standard the city's trying to achieve. Um, right. It, it, it's part of getting to where we all want to go. And, you know, if we can have good paying jobs and we can offer those not only to residents but to the students who are our, our future, 
then you know that's a good thing. So let's everybody contribute and be part of it. You know, it, in, you know, for so many years, you know, Sandusky was referred to as a place to, to not be, to, to, to leave. And you don't hear that anymore. I mean, and it's, it's, there's a lot of cheerleaders. There's a lot of people who are so pleased with what the city's done. It's certainly, it, there are many heroes, many, many people who contributed to the success of Sandusky. A lot of commitment from a lot of different individuals. Schools, uh, you know, what a- Voters who voted for the school building. I mean, when, when other communities haven't been able to pass one, uh, a levy, you know, Sandusky and s stepped up and, um, you know, what a vote of confidence and not only in the schools uh, and the administration, but the students themselves, that's you know, right. this is an investment in them. So that's good. Cedar Point, I mean, continually comes to the plate and invites us to be part part of it and to contribute to uh, the city's development. So, you know, that's very positive. It is very positive. So a, a real partner uh, <coughs> that, that cares about the city and has always cared about the city. Um, you know, but again, I have issues. I think there's things that still can be done uh, better, but um, you know, there's a process and there's still a chance for residents to have a voice at the table. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that the city does allow me to have those conversations with, uh, with the city manager, the commissioners and they others. They continue. And uh, to allow you know, residents to contribute to, uh, to refining the city. Now, did you, you had a question for me, I think I want to remind uh, you. you. Wanted, you wanted, yeah, what was your first job? What, <laughs> what was, was your my first, first summer, job? Summer job? I was a paper boy for the Sandusky Regi Register, the Sandusky Register. And what year was that? 1971, probably. But my first real job where I got a paycheck was at the former Cedar Villa Restaurant on Cleveland Road, uh, across from Green Tree Inn. Uh, whatever that's called now, it's still called Green Tree in my mind, the hotel over there uh, where, the, uh, where the horse bedding is, you know where I mean, sure. uh, right near the causeway in Cleveland Road, Cedar Villa, I was a busboy, and I remember my father said, my, 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 um, the way it happened, and I, I had a friend who, who worked there, he was a couple years older than I was, and his mother worked there. And he told me, you can get a job here when you're 14. And so I went and I, I, I told my mom, I'm going to apply for a job there. And she said, OK, I'll take you. And George Spadaro, Giorgio, as he was known in 1973, uh, George Spadaro hired me. And my mother said she never <laughs> for a minute believed that that skinny kid would get a real job. So she had less <laughs> confidence in me than I had. But I got that job and I remember my father's advice was whatever you do, you do it well. You make yourself valuable to your employer. And, and I've been taking that advice ever since. Uh, and I try to make myself valuable to the register to this day. So uh, it was a good experience for me. So I know what a, a first job means. And, uh, and the thing, and we're gonna talk to Paul Siegfried on Wednesday at the River Road McDonald's about what he looks for in prospective employers. And, and he gives people a lot of first jobs, I think. And uh, yeah, that's what and, we're and what an about. investment uh, he and Michelle have made in uh, this community and this region with uh, taking over those McDonald's and the, uh, uh, the com complete remake of, yeah. of those facilities. Uh, um, I don't know if you've been in them yet. They're gorgeous. They're I just was at the gorgeous. River Road one yesterday. As yeah, it wasn't isn't it impressive. We did the drive-through though. Oh, okay. Well, you need to get inside. It's, it's we're going to be there tomorrow. I thought I'm going to be Wednesday. there tomorrow or Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday at one uh, thirty. Yes, I think you said. And uh, well, Mark, uh, I want to thank you for talking about this, and thank you for always being. What is this uh, on your shirt? Did I get one of these? Can you can you order this shirt? I I, I, can, I can get you one of these. Uh, is this your design? It, it is. I and just, what what's the meaning of it? Uh, <laughs> you, you really wanted to get into this, huh? <laughs> um, well, it's Fit. reminders that it's, it's all about democracy, and these are sort of the all the names that have been in the uh, in the news. Breitbart, in the last... read Breitbart, fake news, alternative facts. Uh, Comey is even there. Yeah. Comey, the former FBI director. So are you a big fan of, of the current administration? Or what is it that you're You really want to get into this? I do, I, just yeah. briefly. Um, I, I am not. I, I, I think, uh, it, boy, the presidency is being greatly diminished in, 
and in that uh, our our country and our institutions are are really under attack in ways that we have have never experienced or seen before. Why do you think he he maintains uh, President Trump maintains a uh, the stalwart support from from his base. Why do you think they can't see the same thing that you see, and that I see? Uh, danger, danger, Will Robinson. Danger. I've seen danger since I, I never, for a minute, thought this man was going to be elected. So I didn't worry about it too much. And uh, but danger, danger, ever since he's been elected. And I, I don't think I'm being unfair. Um. I, I don't know, but this uh, this Russia uh, thing is the collusion. Um, you know, the we're not we're not collusion. years, but it's it's getting more and more complicated, and more and more people involved all the time, and it's uh, very uh, disconcerting. It is. Uh, it is to know that. I mean, it's a movie that you couldn't make up. Yeah, you know, I used to enjoy uh, that program with Frank Underwood as the president. Uh, yeah. One Nation Underwood. What is the what is the, the the House of Cards? Yes. And it was so far fetched, you know, but frightening. And now it seems lame. It seems lame compared tame. to tame, <laughs> tame compared to what we're facing with this president in office. Do you think he survives? In office, uh, as president, do you think he is impeached? Uh, Boy, we've Ed, really veered off topic. Here. Yeah, we we'll need to. Answer. Are you comfortable with this? I, I haven't, I haven't broached this topic on between the lines. So I, at, at the rate, at the rate that things are going, I don't know how we can do another six months of, of this just six continuous. Months. I don't know how we can get through the next six months of just doing this every week. Something right, new. Something new. Something that's a distraction and. Uh, and there just are so many issues that do need to be, um, you know, watched and, and managed, and uh, certainly the security of the uh, the internet security that we've seen. I mean, well, now the voter fraud panel, and you know, I think that the, the the only bright spot I see right now is the blowback, uh, the blowback coming from Trump supporters uh, against people who are anti-Trump. I would say I'm anti-Trump. You know, has lessened. The volume is way down. You know, uh, uh, and Lindsey Graham has is I think stepped up in an important way and um, saying that he is he's about the truth and he's going John to get McCain, to it. John McCain. John yeah. McCain. In 1974, it was Republicans who went to Richard Nixon and said, "You do not have our support," and they told him that. And the next day, uh, Richard Nixon announced he would resign from office. Do you see that as a possibility? Um, I, I, if it continues the way we're going, I don't know right. that there's going to. And if the if the uh, support continues to go down, I guess the Comey fire, firing only had 29% uh, support for that. Uh, that means we're 71%. Uh, but at least against. until 2019, or or you know when the uh, new Congress takes office, you know it'll take Republicans to force him out. And that remains to be seen. In 1974, Republicans did go to Richard Nixon and tell him he did not have their support, and Richard Nixon decided to resign. Uh, so we'll see how this pans out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. But let's wrap up uh, locally. There's still this, and uh, we've only have a couple weeks of school left. So please think about the think students, about jobs for the young, young people, people around us, and if you can reach out some way and uh, help to create a, a positive future, give them hope that. Uh, and, uh, and let them know that they are a priority in our community. All right. With that, we're going to sign off. Thank you, Mark, okay. for being my guest on Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. We'll be back here uh, in just a couple days on Wednesday with uh, State Senator Frank LaRose. Thank you for being with us. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. Hello.